This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sander Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, sacred international journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earth walk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. The following program is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statement of fact expressed in the following program are strictly those of the host and their guests and are not to be construed as those of Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, their affiliated companies, networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Know the genius in you, where in a single moment you can recognize your brilliance and change your life. This is a transformational hour that covers an array of topics that demonstrate how individuals use their native talents, as shown in their name, to look at the ordinary in extraordinary ways. Albert Einstein once said that everybody's a genius. Why would one of the smartest people on the planet declare that everyone is a genius unless he knew that to be true? I'm Sharon Lynn Wyatt. And in each weekly show, you'll hear the fascinating ways other people discovered the genius in them and what they were able to accomplish. At the end of each show, you'll hear clues on how you can recognize your own innate genius. All over the world, people have many, many diverse interests. And in that vein, we ask how highly successful people have managed to achieve their genius mindset by utilizing the gifts that are seen in their name, utilizing namology science. Our expert tonight is Gail Minogue, who has developed her genius in the area of trends and forecasting. Gail Minogue is a published authority in the symbolic relationship of numbers to our lives, with solid experience as a licensed commodities broker since 1987, that's 30 years now, and a history of offering visionary viewpoints on world events. Gail combines many disciplines to deliver wise perspectives coupled with practical understanding of trends and events past present, and future. Gail assists individuals and organizations to navigate the dynamics of change and become master builders of their futures, relationships, and successes. She provides clients with remarkable insights through a unique combination of trends analysis and forecasting, ancient and contemporary cyclical data, Pythagorean numerology, plus the wisdom gained from her experience in business markets and her intensive study and use of intuitive spiritual systems. Gail is based in Los Angeles and is a professional who reveals the symbolic relationships of numbers to our life experiences. Her specialty is integrating real world experiences with holistic inner teachings. Through the use of sacred geometry, hermetic laws, cyclical data, and leveraging proven developmental patterns in diverse areas, Gail is able to bridge the two worlds. Clients have included major law firms, Caldwell Banker, the Boston Counseling Group, Women in Real Estate, the Welfare to Work Program of Chicago, multiple nonprofits, as well as key executives, business owners, and numerous civic organizations. Gail's books include Divine Design, How You Created the Life You're Living, now in its third edition with expanded content, 
and The Invisible System, which is in final preparation for publication. In addition, she's been on media appearances and outlets including CNN, ABC, and Charter Communications. And she's produced a DVD special, New World Renaissance. Gail's name indicates that she is an agent for change. People typically resist changing as it's easier to keep going in the same patterns. Yet there are those few individuals who thrive on change and assist others in a smooth and logical way to become comfortable with changing. Gail's name indicates she's one of those people. Her name also indicates that her life gets better with each year that passes and that she has a tendency to be a workaholic. Her clients benefit from that work as she shares her insights with them and on her website with the rest of us at www.gailminogue.com. That's G A I L. M-I-N-O-G-U-E dot com. Welcome to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You radio show, Gail. Hi. It's, wow, I'm so, oh, I didn't know all that about myself, but that's great. I'm happy to hear it. Glad to be with you, Sharon. Gail, how does your book, Divine Design, How You Created Your Life, Your Living, assist individuals? We've got one minute for you to just give us a good synopsis. Well, what I do is I help people understand their blueprint or their name that they created before birth that they're carrying with them. And so the book tells them how to take that apart, and it gives them their timing on events. It gives them um, their issues or their challenges in this lifetime and their destiny they're going towards. So it's extremely helpful, uh, as well as explains different numbers applying to your house, to your job, to your license plate to even the freeway numbers. So it really goes into a a greater depth about understanding each letter in your name and understanding your timing for your events. It's sort of like a prevention and it's also a guidance. Well, I'm just fascinated by all of this as I'm sure our listeners are. Stay tuned to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, which is heard on xzbn.net radio station and on knowthename.com. After the break, We'll find out if Gail sees a recession in 2017. What do the numbers tell us? Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, which is being heard on xzbn.net and knowthename.com. Our guest tonight is Gail Minogue, whose website is her name, Gail Minogue, spelled M-I-N-O-G-U-E, dot com. Okay, Gail, you use numerology as a tool when you counsel individuals and businesses. What exactly is numerology, and where did it originate? Well, it's it's... Who knows where it originated? Dude, it's ancient. It's before writing, um, and it's you know it goes back thousands and thousands of years. It really is a system of energy and understanding numbers attached to those energies. And if you look at letters in any word or any name, there's energy of a number behind that letter, such as A is a one, B is a two, C is a three. And by understanding the numbers of that word or that name, you understand a great deal about the person. So we all have a system that we create so that we can have a guidance system when we arrive here. And we use that guidance system through our entire life until the day we we leave. We have soul cycles, which happen every seven years, and we have um, a great deal of information on each individual year, how you will progress that year. But the system itself... Numerology is really from sacred geometry. It is tied to the constellations. As the constellations move in the heavens, everything affects you. Everything is constantly moving. And so you have an uh, an energy package, a a guidance system, and you understand how to move forward. But most people aren't a clue that they have it. So it's, it's a wonderful thing when you discover how to work with it so you can live your full potential or what I call your true work rather than the right work. You know, this is just fascinating to me because as I was developing nameology science, everybody asked me, well, is that numerology? And I said, no, I don't know anything about numerology. So this is just fascinating to me how numbers can affect, you know, where we're going and what we're doing. On your website, uh, gailminogue.com, you mentioned some numerology tips to remember in a recession. What are they? What are the well, key ones? You- You have to look at right now, we're not in a recession. I don't see a recession. Uh, We are in a a universal one year. 2016 is, you can always take a look at the year and tell what year you're in for for the world. And it's a one year, so it's a brand new beginning year. And it feels like a new year. It's like, what do we do? The whole world's hair is on fire right now. But I don't see a recession this year. And it's, it's unusual to have a recession in a one year. Um, that's not to say it won't come, but it's not coming this year. And I don't think that, you know, there'll be ups and downs in other countries, but I don't see it here. Um, Where I do see a a recession is probably 2019. And remember, 19 is a karmic debt number, so that has an influence on that entire year. So, you know, that's two years away. But we have a lot to, you know, we have a lot to start and initiate. And as you see with today's inauguration, um, you could see that everything is, is changing or, you know, it's thrown up in the air. We don't know where it's going to come down, but it's a brand new beginning of some sort. And so um, I would not say that the numerology will predict a 
recession, you combine it with some other things going on at the same time. So you were talking to us about a one being a universal year. And yeah, 2006, 2017. So because two plus one plus seven is 10 and one plus zero is one, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, earlier you mentioned something, you used the term a personal year. So what do you mean by that? And how does that correlate to the universal year? Each person has a personal year. And you take that person's month of birth and day of birth. So let's say today. Today is January 20. So the month is January or or one month, and the day is 20 or a two month. So that is a three, okay? And so you would take a look at that. If you had a birthday of 120, which incidentally today is Kellyanne Conway's birthday. It's her 50th birthday. She is the person who is Donald Trump's right-hand person, the one who wore, wore the red, white, and blue outfit today. In her 50th today, so she is in a numerology four year. She has her month and day, which is three, added to the universal year, which is one. So you always add your month and day to the universal year. And each year it will change for you. So for Kellyanne, she's going to be in a four year this year. She'll be working and working and working. That's her whole year is nothing but work. And so uh, each year changes and each year will give you a different energy. Uh, Some years you're going to make big changes. Other years you're going to wind down and close shop. Other years you're going to personally begin new things. So for her, it's about the number four, her personal year, and so she will work and be very productive. The problem with that for her, it's one of her karmic numbers, meaning that she has no four in her name. So she has no letters that equal a four. So this will be a very karmic year for Kelly Ann Conway. And hopefully she will make it through because she is already burned out, you know. And um, so it's each person has their own personal year, along with the universal year that everyone is in. But it's more important to understand your own personal year. That's the key that you're living by that year. Like I'm in a nine year, so I'm going to finish up. It's the ending number. My personal year is nine. So I will be ending many, many things this year completion, cleaning out, donating stuff. It's all about endings and completions. Would you give us a brief rundown on the numbers not four and nine since you've already covered those, just like a simple sentence, like the basics? One is a new beginning. One is always fresh start. It's like Johnny Appleseed. Get out there and start something new, new business, new, um, new, new house, new whatever. But it's always beginning. You have to have something to plant or you won't have anything to harvest in eight years. So the number one year, and there's only one through nine, everything repeats, then it's 10, 11. So the number one year is new beginnings. The number two is patience, because the seeds you planted are growing. You have to be very patient. You have to tend to your your um, garden, shall we say. But patience is key, because you can't see the roots. They're getting strength under the ground. So it looks like nothing's going on. And so a number two year, you need to guard your plants. You need to take care of them and not, have, not get fearful that they're not growing, because they are. Number three is where you start to see the roots and the shoots come up from all the seeds you planted in your one year. So if you didn't plant, what's going to come up? So this is your year when you weed the garden, because you have these new plants, you want to get the weeds out of there. It's a great year of creation. It's a great year of creativity. This is where you network, you go out, and you um, change your appearance. You just really, really... You know people and maybe host some things yourself. So it's a very creative year. Write, you know, speak, whatever is your creative talent. The number four is, of course, the hard work. You did all that planting, weeding, patience. Now you have to do the hard work to grow it strong, build the platform. So in a four-year, you're always building a foundation. And then the five years, we took a look at all this, and you have to make changes. Of number five, even the number five, when you look at it, The part of it looks backwards, and the top of it looks forward. So the five is always able to be a change time where you bring the past into the future but making changes to it. So this is the year where you will market yourself, you will promote yourself, and you will make change. Maybe you'll move. Maybe you'll um, make changes in your value system. But it's always about change. Some of it, very unexpected. The number six year is always about 
domestic responsibility, home, family. Oh, my gosh. Everybody needs you in a six-year. It's like pieces of you get torn apart if you're not careful. So always be careful in a six-year that you don't over be responsible. You know, don't take care of everybody because everybody's going to need you in a six-year. It's a very domestic number. It's a number of love and pregnancy and divorce and marriage. And we get married in the sixth month of the year, which is June. So the number seven is your is your rest and recovery and restoration year. So if you were in a personal seven year, you need to stop working so hard. You need to think things through. You need to restore yourself. You must do that or the next following two years will not be as effective. So this is your time out like the soil. You rest for the year. Cut back on your work, all these kinds of things, and maybe go to school or just retreat, but you plan, you assess, you pray, and you reflect. The number eight year is your harvest. Everything you plan in that one year, you're now going to harvest this. So it's all about money and business and everything to do with going back and see what you can gain from all the time that you put in for the last eight years, okay? So eight is always about money, maybe spending money to make money. It's a year where you will be concerned with very much the material world. And then the number nine year is you begin to wind it down. So for me, it's a nine year, and I am literally cleaning up stuff, finishing projects. The book has to come out this year. Everything has to be. It's just there's a lot of pressure to finish up, finish up, finish up. So you, I can start a new cycle next year in a one year. You know, on, I think all of that is just fascinating. You know, on your website, you write the Minogue Times, which I personally found incredibly fascinating when I was reading it. It's a very informative filled newsletter that's published once a month. In the Minogue Times, you have a column called View from the Freeway that's both yeah. very informative and very provocative. Would you expand on this month's insights and how you decide what's going into that column? I honestly, I try to, you know, I do. What's even more juicy to me is I post every Tuesday or Wednesday. I do the, the newsletter. I used to do it every month, but it got to be so much with the posts and, you know, Facebook Live and everything. So now I do the quarterly on the newsletter. But in the column on View from the Freeway, I try to take something that is either uh, in the consciousness of the citizens or in society, but a view of looking at something and take, making us look maybe deeper into something or from another angle. What I like to do is to synthesize what looks like disconnected information and bring it all together so you can see the connectedness of all these sort of random events, but they're not random. There's nothing really random here at all. In, even in trading, in commodity trading, there's this theory called the chaos theory. There's complete order in chaos. And when, when people know how to trade on that, there's actually a pattern to chaos. So what I like to do is to take um, just a view and say, and then write about it. And um, I also like to put in there also some Q&A that people like to know about. And then I also like to do about um, the latest things that are coming on the scene, maybe some uh, financial breakthroughs, uh, science breakthroughs, stuff like that, where we're going, things like that and then posting every week. So if anyone wants to get on my email list, you also get a free chapter of my book, and you can sign up and you can, you'll get the post, and then when I do the newsletter, you'll get that, and anything else I comment about. <laughs> well, I always found the, find those readings just fascinating because you're looking at things from such different angles and very well researched where you quote a lot of different people. Um, in, yeah. the chaos, in the chaos theory in math, it's like, how would you arrange things? Suppose we had all pink colored ping pong balls. Would you sort them all into clear boxes? So if you wanted a red ping pong ball, you could grab one. Or the chaos theory says, if you just let them all bounce all at one time, the red one will be in grabbing distance and you can just, you know, take it because there's some kind of ordering that will pull to you what you know. Um, so stay tuned to know the name, know the genius in you. This show is dedicated to knowing more about upcoming trends after the break, we'll find out about some of the different trends that Gail Minogue sees for 2017. Again, her website is gailminogue.com, and it's spelled G-A-I-L-M-I-N-O-G-U-E 
www.thepowerhouse.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Welcome back. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyatt, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. Our guest tonight is Gail Minogue, author of Divine Design, How You Created the Life You Are Living. 
Gail, in one of your blogs, you address how to purchase a house by the numbers. First, is this good timing to buy a house? And what do we know about the house based on the numbers of that house? Well, just as you have a number for your life path from your date of birth, a house has a number. A house has an address. And so, remember, the Bible tells you your days are numbered. Well, your days are numbered, your houses are numbered, your office is numbered, everything's numbered, your license plates are numbered. And so a house gives off the vibration of the number of that house. So if that number is, say, a 4-0, it's a 40 house or a 4. So it's going to give off the vibration of that number. Now, if you are missing a number 4, you say no letter D, no letter M, or no letter V in your name, those are all versions of 4. You know, one is a, one is a 4, one is a 13, and one is a 22. They're all versions of 4. If you have no letter that equals a 4 in your name, this is a karmic implication for you to correct. Well, say you move into a nice 40 house. Everything gets activated in that house. So you will learn the lesson and the karma attached to that number for you. And sometimes that can be very painful or harder or all you do is work in that house. Or every time, or all you know is that ever since you've been there, the house need, re, needed work all the time. So this is how houses tell you. They tell you what they, what they are like and they tell you what they want. And so people move into houses and they have great time there and other people move into houses and it's awful. You know, everything, every, once they moved to that house, their whole life turned bad or something like that. And they didn't pay any attention to their own blueprint or their own lessons or the number of that house. And I could tell you stories that would make your hair stand on in on um, numbers that have to do with what we call karmic debts and uh, things that happen from that house itself. So numbers are very important on houses, and they are on offices, very much so. What's your office number? I had a friend, I had a client who had a gymnasium, or not, it was a private training, private weight training, and he had a seven. It was, it, it totaled and reduced to a seven, which is a very retreat number. It's a quiet number. It's the year of rest and recovery, kind of go away from everything. He couldn't get any business in there. I said, well, you're moving this active business of physical weightlifting in a seven, in a seven uh, uh, number. So it wasn't, this was not three, four, whatever. It actually was like a 70. The address was 70. Um, so he, we had to do, we had to, ch- we had to put classes in yoga in there. We had to change the coloring. We had to add dimensions that were peaceful and, and reflective to his weight training. And that's what we did, and his business picked up because that is not a number for a business where you're open to the public and you just want them to walk in. It could be, say, an intellectual business. I had I worked in an office where you had to ring the door. It was, it was a funny place where people were never just let in. We had a glass door. You could see people, and they had to ring a bell to get in, and it was where everything was very mental, and it wasn't a place where visitors really came, and that was a seven. But it did very well because it was all about being in. But anything public, you don't really want a seven. If it's a retreat, monastic, or a school, it's fine. So this is how um, numbers affect people. But is there always a remedy? Like you were saying how you change the colors in his office. And so is there always a remedy? Sometimes there's a remedy and sometimes there's nothing more than you can just move. Some people have to move. Or well, they've been there long enough, they can't take it anymore, and I always recommend they move. Well, I know that when I lived in China, there were certain house numbers that nobody wanted to buy. If the house was a four or the house was a six, it was really hard to sell that house because nobody wanted one. Well, the, the word four in Chinese is the same word as death. So you can't ever sell a four. You could never move, you know, nobody wants to move into death. And what was it with the six? I have no idea because six is actually a very good number. I don't know what that translates to what it sounds like in, say, Mandarin. I don't know. I mean, it could sound like something very terrible. But I know that the, the word for in our language is the same word for death in, the, in, in Chinese. In in the, so, you know, heck, I don't want to move. I, if I was Chinese, I would not move into a four house. 
How well, I that? also no. know that some of the people here have gone down to the post office and said, versus me moving, is there a way I can change my number on my house? And the post office normally will let you add to or subtract to because you still have to be a number that's either even or odd on your side of the street and you still have to be between the other houses. But they're usually four apart. So you have a little bit of leeway, which can also change the energy, right? So you wouldn't have to move if you just change no, the number. really. The house is registered with the government. It's a plot. It's, you know, it's land. It's been registered with a city or a county. And it's, it's not changeable, really, for the most part. With, you know, you may under exception, but that, that house number is there. It was given to the plot when it was built. And so okay. it's actually recorded with a title and everything else in the county so you can try you can go with the post office and that's also very uh you know you can tell them i need changes to put that but actually the official registration of that property is with the county and so that number is there when it was built okay so that it would still be there then it would be underlined it would still be there yeah it would still be there it's still okay. underneath you know the same number <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, you mm-hmm. often quote others on your well-researched blog, and this month was about whether we suffer when we interfere with another person's decisions. Would you elaborate on that for us? Yes. Once a person reaches the age of, say, almost consent or 18 or so or older, um, you may give them advice, but you cannot, you should not interfere. After you give this advice, you cannot try to change them or make them or what have you, they will live by their decisions. So it's really, it's, you can get yourself into a lot of repeat karma by insisting that you direct them, guide them, save them, what have you, uh, at a certain point. You can certainly give what you think is wise advice and tell them that, you know, you don't believe that, you, you believe they're making a big mistake and here's the reason why, and then you have to let it go. Because they're on a learning, and if you interfere with their learning, and sometimes they're learning, they have to hit the curb to learn. Some people, that's the only way they will learn. And you have to sit back and be de- as detached as you can stand. Um, you know, and these are, for, these are what I'm talking I'm not talking about teenagers who need your guidance, but I'm talking about people who are over the age of 18 or 20, and they are making these dumb mistakes, or even older, and all you can do is give your advice, but you can't, you have no right to interfere with what they're set out to learn because you don't really know what it is. Right. I've often heard that we don't want to add advice to anyone's life, and that's why we don't give advice. Um, yeah. Do you, do you know you our can president? Give, you can give your opinion or you can give that, um, you know, and maybe try to help a friend by acknowledging something you feel that that's very detrimental to them. But then after that, you got to... Do not interfere and say, you know, remember I told you so, no. Okay. Do that's you know so, our new president's so numbers? Have you have you done Donald's numbers? Yeah, sure, I've done Donald's numbers, yeah, sure. sure. So well, Donald, what is Donald's Donald's number? very, very smart. He's got a seven uh, personality, a seven soul number, and a five destiny, and he has a four life path. What does that mean? His consonants total of four, a seven, vowels, con- seven, and the full name added those two is really um, reduces to the number five. And his life path from his date, full date of birth is a um, four. He's also born on a karmic death day. He's born on the 14th. So he has some, oh, I don't know what, some kind of karmic debt on the physical level. So it's interesting. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He's germophobic. There's something there that on um, that there's some debt to be paid on the physical level in this incarnation and he's basically um done his job was to get this change made i don't i don't honestly believe he will get past uh, a, a second term i'm not sure he's going to get through this first one when you mean you don't think he's going to get through the first one do you see impeachment or do you see tragedy or I see more of as he steps out a lot of the things that um, that he he's just not aware he unfortunately Donald Trump doesn't know what he doesn't know and so he's stepping out into an arena that he basically has put a lot of people who will uh, quote fully in charge 
from, you know, his cabinet and his other people because he really does not know. And so um, what's going to happen along the lines, some of these cabinet people are going to drop out even in the first year. Or um, they'll, they'll go, something will go against Trump, meaning we just won't agree. Because he's used to running, quote, making deals the way he does them and wants them. And basically, um, that's the type of, of leadership is doing his deal. And some of these cabinet members are not going to go with that. And so you're going to see some of the changes happening probably within the first year, certainly by the second year. And um, you'll also see the same thing going with Congress. Right now, he, he's, the Congress is with him and his people are with him. But as time goes on, that's going to change. And I do see that the potential for him to not run a second term is very strong, but you're not going to see this show up until 2019. Oh, and that was the year that you said we could easily have a recession. Yeah, that's more of a recession year for us. It's also a karmic debt year, the 19. Remember, 13, 14, 16, 19 are debt numbers. Each one has different meaning, but um, I don't see any this year. Um, I I think going out, I think a lot of the stuff that he wants to do, he'll do as many executive orders as he can possibly fit in, but any real stuff or real changes are going to have to come with Congress. So a lot of this is just going to be protracted, you know, meaning that you think you know um, that a lot of stuff will happen immediately. And there will be some, um, but there'll be executive order. But the other things they'll have to, they'll take much more long, much longer than, than you understand or what he's saying to come about. Well, he's used to being the head of a company where he can just give orders versus having That's to right. he's have used to kind of being like a king and or an emperor kind of. He's got that kind of energy. I'm going to save you all. And um, so unfortunately, he's really promised a lot of stuff. You know, it's like I'm this is it. We'll never have this again. And this is going to be our greatest job, whatever. But um, unfortunately, um a lot of this is really going to be very protracted. There will be some things that will be tra-la, like he'll get out of the TPP or whatever, that trade for Pacific. Um, he'll just, that's easy because it hasn't been solidified, so he can easily drop that. But when we get into other things like China or Russia, that's a whole other ballgame. Or, um, you know, tariffs or, or all kinds of things like that. You're going to see lawsuits. There's already lawsuits that have come out today. Um, about getting him to expose, now that he's president, he has to expose certain um, it, right for information act he's going to have to now expose. He couldn't do that until he became president. So Freedom of Information Act, and that's already been filed. That lawsuit was filed today. So you're going to see a lot of stuff go on. But right now, it's, he's, he's got a populist movement going a very well, isolationist movement going. It's going to be interesting, whatever it is, and we're all along for the ride. Stay yes, tuned. Are. Know the name, know the genius in you on xzbn.net and knowthename.com. After the break, we'll find out what Gail has in her name that has assisted her that you may have in your name as well. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 
401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, and of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program. For the secret to everything is for you, the listener, for those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover the secret to everything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. Our guest tonight is Gail Minogue, whose website is her name, spelled G-A-I-L-M-I-N-O-G-U-E. She has taken her ability to forecast future trends to a level where she's able to assist others better prepare for their futures. Um, Gail, about taxation, what do you expect to happen where taxes are involved? Oh, I expect them to be cut. Yeah, definitely. That doesn't, you know, short term, that's great. But long term, it really raises the deficit and um, which it will grow. And many of the things that he wants to do right now are going to raise the deficit because if Congress goes along with them because they're very cost intensive, uh, whether it's infrastructure, uh, things like that, or military, um, things like that. And lowering the taxes means, well, what's going to pay for some of this? So there's the deficit spending, which then has to get rectified um, in several years. So we don't know. It, it, a lot of it is going to have to be very Congress, um, Congress, you know, working hand in glove. 
and I don't know how Congress will respond, but I can, you can expect tax cuts, particularly for um, corporations, and to help, you know, with the business. Right. Well, the the last time there was tax cuts, businesses hired more people, and it seemed like then more people were paying in for taxes. But you're saying well, you, you don't you see that. You hope that's what they do. It doesn't necessarily mean they will hire more business, more people, because we're becoming more and more automated. Um, they could do other things with that money they save rather than hire people. It's not you know years ago you could hire more people because they were necessarily. Um, you needed more jobs. But as we go forward with automation, you actually need less people, but you need more higher skilled people. Yeah, that brings us to education, which is a whole show in itself. Yeah, yeah, it does. So there's a lot of complications about, well, will a company, if it brings its money back from overseas, will it invest and expand Another thing that you have to put a stipulation in, because if I bring my offshore company, I bring that money back into this country, what's going to stop me from going out and buying other companies with it instead of hiring more people or expanding my business? I may just go buy other companies and consolidate. Well, it'll be interesting to watch what happens. You know, this but there show- will be tax cuts, definitely. Okay. This show is airing on the same day as your webinar on the changes in forecasts for 2017, so we've missed that. However, you've got a two-day event coming up on March 25th and 26th. Would you tell us about that one and how to register for it? Well, that I'm doing a two-day intensive on numerology and numbers and the patterns of numbers. It's very it's it's uh, in Los Angeles, and they can go on my website and register for that. Um, I have I've. I've really not seen anyone do a two-day intensive on, on numerology or any of that information where they go into what I call very esoteric information on numbers that most people don't know about. And so I will be, it's, a, it's basically, I try to keep the numbers down on registration. And so if anybody wants it, they need to go and register now. I haven't been promoting that. It's just up on the website. And uh, I'll also be in uh, Tucson, Arizona coming up. Um, in February, I have several events coming up, and I plan to do some classes, some online classes. So if anyone is um, registered uh, to get my, you know, with their email address, they'll know about my classes because they'll get notified when I do them. Okay. What are the latest trends and forecasts for businesses? Is this a good year for most businesses? I think it is. I think it's a better year for most businesses. Uh, first of all, the economy is in very good shape, and um, we have 4.6 uh, unemployment, which is very, very low. Um, we've been creating more jobs in spite of, you know, what you hear. Uh, what happens is there are pockets of the country where a lot of manufacturing left, and a lot of that manufacturing, even though um, right now, like Amazon is saying, it's going to do 100,000 new jobs. Well, most of those new jobs are going to be extremely low-paying and in warehouses. But you have areas of the pockets of the country which didn't do well, and those areas need either retraining um, or some kind of incentive to put a business there. And then you'll have to train the people. The people have to get educated because it's no longer um, where a high school education is going to cut it anymore. You were just mentioning an entrepreneur and do it yourself. There, there are certain pockets in the country that are doing better than other ones. Do states have numbers that also affect them? And states have numbers. States when they when that state was incorporated into the statehood of the United States, it had a date, and that's the date of its birth. And it tells you a lot about that state, and it also tells you about the destiny of that state and what type of people it likes. So it's very important to know the date of incorporation of a business and the date of statehood for a state each city has a date when it was founded the same idea the same thing everybody has a number so if you look at california where i am california's date the life path of california is a five and anyone who in the country of the united states is a five from july 4th 1776 So this country is a catalyst of change for the world. It's constantly changing, changing marketing, and it's 
its goal is to develop assimilation of individuals here and export that out to the world. So we have to learn to assimilate well. And it's like, the ironic thing is, no matter how much you try to close off the borders, there's actually more people coming from around the world now than there ever was. The entire world is on the move coming out of the Middle East and Africa, and they're coming here. And they're going to be keep coming here, no matter what so, we do. And it, it's really important that we learn to assimilate because that was part of the founding of this country. It's a spiritual founding of this country, is to be a catalyst of change, develop a, a sense of assimilation so we can master that and help the world master assimilation. Because most of the world is still very tribal. So you're seeing more and more people still coming in. Yes. So our population is still growing. It will. Yes. So this, are you this type of isolationism that we are about to go under the spell of isolation for short term um, will not last. It will not last. Okay, well, and it'll be interesting to see if he builds that wall or not. I just don't see how that's well, going to be. Well, he'll put money into a fence because the money was already allotted for the repair and maintenance. That's already there. And so, and that was put in by Bush. And so what we could do is they'll move money around to improve the existing one. But it will go off as building a wall. It's already there. And okay. we'll have more money put on the border for either equipment or for patrols, et cetera. Are you, working on anything, are you working on anything new right now, Gail, that you'd like to share with us? Working on anything new? I'm just, I'm really trying to um, get out more and teach more of the understanding of numbers so that people can help themselves. So it's well, not, I don't know if it's new. It's, it's more or less a different delivery system now because we have to reach them through the uh, Internet, through more online, and so people can really understand how their own blueprints in their own lives work. I think it's so important. In my well, name, when I learned my own name, I really learned about how my life, you know, what I've been given for either gifts or takeaways, All it's all there, and it was such a great understanding of myself. Well, then you've got a second book, though, fixing to come out fairly soon. Yes, I have a second book on the invisible system actually it's the invisible guidance system and i have four systems in there for people to understand um the one of them is the numerological system the astrological system the invisible system of the I Ching, and the invisible system of the constellations because everything is connected and we are you can't see the system but it's playing on us 24 hours a day do you have an approximate date for that or a goal date? Well, I have to, yeah, it will be out certainly by the uh, the end of summer. So that seems like it's going to be a good time for, for books to come out. That's when uh, my goal date is for Know the Name, Know the Health, the third book in my trilogy. So that must great. be a good timing. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's very good. And you can, um, you know, in numerology, in numbers, lies your health. Every number has, every number, like your life path, Every body part is controlled by a number. So if you know your life path from your date of birth, reduced, uh, mine is a five, so my whole digestive system is under this ruling, my process elimination. And one of the things about the country of the number five, which is the United States of America, has tremendous digestion problems. So we're always talking and selling for constipation and reflex, uh, all these problems with indigestion and digestion. Because fives have to take a tremendous amount of life in and assimilate it very quickly. And if you notice, America is always constantly moving to the next thing. So it has a process of, of absorption and uh, elimination. So you have a lot of colon problems and digestive <laughs> problems in America. Gail, I want to thank you for being with us. Be prepared and feel comforted to also motivate to action when you experience Gail's work. Her website, again, is gailmanogue.com. Gail's name excels at assisting others to change gracefully and not be afraid of what lies ahead. This is found in the first name where her first letter is G. If your first name starts with a G, you, too, have the ability to assist others to gracefully embrace change. Do you want to know where your genius lies? I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth host of the radio show, Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. 
which can be heard every weekday at various hours right here on xzbn.net radio and xzone radio station and on know the name know, uh, com. tune in to hear the fascinating ways other people discover the genius in themselves and what they were able to accomplish in each upcoming show you'll hear clues on how you can recognize your own innate genius and if you wish to know more about your name and how you can discover your innate genius, go to knowthename.com and give yourself the gift of a private session to find out what your name says about you. This is Sharon Lynn Wyeth signing off. <laughs>